Rina and Ram. Yeah, we can start. We have good. Sorry, there was audience. a small intrusion. I am just ensuring that. Okay, yeah, we can start. Okay, so good evening, everyone, and I hope everyone is fit and fine. A uh, very short introduction about myself. My name is Meghamala and I am working with the marketing team in Aritic. I will be the moderator and host of this webinar. I am having with me Ms. Aparna, my colleague from marketing team as well as co-host of this webinar. We have Mr. Ankit Prakash also with us. Ankit is the principal founder of EasySendy and Arity, a full stack integrated sales and marketing automation platform for the B2B small and medium enterprise brands. Uh, hi everyone, good evening. Uh, looking forward to today's discussion. Welcome to our seventh live webinar of Arity Live and today's topic is Disrupt the Panel, panel and Scale Revenue Teams with Marketing Automation. Now, Coming to a small introduction about our company, Aritic. Aritic is a unified marketing automation platform for the B2B business team. Our parent company is Data Edge Software Private Limited, a Bangladesh company that started operation in 2015 with two major SaaS product platforms, that is EasySendy and Aritic. EasySendy is focused on SME and SMB business Aritic is focused on customers from media enterprise and enterprise. Around 2P plus companies across the globe include Aritic and EasySendy product platforms. From January 2022, we started getting debt into India and Asia market. Okay, so now coming to today's webinar that is Aritic Live. So we are trying to bring professionals close to Aritic platform with Aritic Live. It is an online talk show for marketing, sales, business development, product leaders and work professionals. The talk show include webinar, on-demand webcast, podcast and live event from Aritic and partner networks. Over to you, Megha. Yeah. So coming to the topic, uh, we all know what if we could easily scale our business team, 10x our business prospect, guest prospect, and expedite revenue opportunities. Welcome to the conversation qualified era, where customers receive legendary customer experience, team can scale individual attention, and AI-powered conversion always guide potential buyers to the next best step. So, we can tell conversational AI facilitates deep two-way discussions across email, SMS, WhatsApp, chatbot channels, race, sales, ready contact, and qualifies lead for the next stage of customer lifecycle. So, we can forward about clicking and downloading to qualify leads. Now, it is the time for conversation quality. To do a deep, in, deep dive into today's discussion, we came up with this new Aritic Live webinar, Disrupt the Funnel and Scale Revenue Teams with Marketing Automation. Okay, so we all know conversational AI is the set of technologies behind automated messaging and speech-enabled applications that offer human-like interaction between computers and humans. Now, conversational AI combines natural language processing, that is NLP, with traditional uh, software, with chatbots, voice assistants, or an interactive voice recognition system to help customers through either a spoken or typed interface like SMS, email, WhatsApp voice, etc. In Aritic, we are capable of doing all of these local integration in one platform itself. You don't have to move in different organization for different products. And that's why we are known as a unified automation platform. Therefore, I would uh, like to tell all our audience and everyone that uh, Aritic is a unified marketing automation platform for B2B and D2C business both. So if you are interested for our discovery call, here is the link to schedule a demo with our expert. So you can just go to the demo and you can schedule your best time that you are available so that our expert can help you out with. Other than that, like, we are open for the next webinar registration, which is on 7th of July. 
So the topic of the webinar will be stages of customer journey in unified digital marketing. Registration link is given in the chatbot again, so you can register for the next webinar as well. Over to you, Mega. So uh, we have our three panel members for this discussion. First member is Ram Tiar, co-founder Pedicly.co. Ram comes with a diverse experience of having worked across sales and marketing roles right through the lead funnel. His experience spans over 25 years of corporates, agencies, and startups. His current role as a founder of an AI startup Predictly primarily deals with helping enterprises to transition into digital automation processes spread over several business, healthcare, legal, human resource, marketing and sales, logistic and fintech. Final building in B2B enterprises has been Ram's domain and he will share his experience during the discussion. Over to you Ram, uh, you can add some point if I miss something from my side. Hey, thanks, uh, Mega, uh, Mega Mala. So it's been uh, a pleasure to join you people, uh, and uh, I would love to share my experience today. Uh, and thanks for the platform you guys have given. Uh, we will talk about lead management, lead funnel development, how, uh, because uh, from the historical perspective, I've been doing lead generation for over 20 years now. So how things have evolved in front of my eyes, how things have changed, is a big uh, learning I, I, for it'll be a big uh, revelation for most of you. Okay, over to you. Yeah, thank you, Ram. So, my next speaker is Karthik Raja, GTM consultant. Karthik, as a marketer by heart and profession, he spent the last 17 years in B2B tech marketing across leadership position. He worked all over the world as marketing manager and the last few years as BP of marketing until 2020. He started his company in 2020 August and also currently helping SaaS com companies on their go-to market strategy. Over to you, Karthik, if you want to add any point. No, I think as a marketer, I'd like to keep it very simple. Great, Karthi. <laughs> That's it, thanks. Okay, so uh, next speaker with us is Reena Jagwani, Digital Media Consultant Social. Reena is a known digital media consultant. She helps startups scale big time with innovation, customize digital marketing strategies, and help streamline digital companies and automate the same. She has more than a decade of experience in the digital segment, be it organic promotion, performance marketing, or marketing automation. And she loves what she does. She is BTEC in electronics from Nirma Institute of Technology and later on evolved in digital space which gives her an edge over the market in deploying digital campaign and automating the same. Over to you, Reena. If I have missed out anything, uh, you can just go ahead and let us know more. No, you have not missed out, but I would definitely like to add something more about it. So basically, digital marketing has evolved over more than a decade now, be it global or even in India. And then automation is something uh, which comes like a boon, a blessing in disguise to the marketing campaigns. Because whatever platform we work on, be it Google, Facebook, Instagram, they are themselves deploying AI big time. And uh, mm -hmm. apart from there, the third party platforms uh, uh, like your platform also, uh, which helps a lot in drip marketing, we can discuss that in a little later in the webinar. So that really helps me automate uh, the campaigns and maybe when I work with startups, my entire activity, entire things that I do automates in a year's time and I, real, uh, I relax. So initially I have to do a lot of work, I automate things and then it's like my work is over. So yes, we can say that robots are replacing humans and that is what uh, kind of life I'm really living and enjoying in this startup segment. Correct. We're looking forward to the webinar. Okay. Yeah, okay. So uh, before starting the discussion, I would request all of our audience to put your question in the chat. We can discuss within the discussion. I mean, the topic, whatever we will be going on, so we can discuss it uh, simultaneously. 
so we can start our discussion round now i will like to ask one question whenever we are discussing about this funnel and ai automation how does the approach to the marketing funnel need to evolve uh, ram you can uh, yep. okay so in my uh, tenure as a marketer uh, let me give you a historical perspective about yeah. how uh, it was earlier and how things are changing right in front of our eyes right so earlier about 20 years ago when i started 20 25 years ago when we started marketing it was prime uh, there was very little email marketing done there was very little uh, digital marketing even digital marketing was new when we started so it all began with what we call as direct marketing okay so in direct marketing we had a lot of uh, uh, mailers you know hard mailers that you would send out to people you send out uh, a, a letter or a postcard for instance and expect them to free, fill in and say okay i'm interested in your product and we would wait and based on the response we would pick up the call and make a call because uh, or uh, that was one way of reaching out to people the other way of reaching out to people was telephony right you would call them up it was primarily cold calling like you get today from various banks and for loans right so even in b2b you would do a lot of cold calling and say okay then i would you know can i talk to you about my product and it was like the zero awareness and there was no concept of you know awareness it was awareness lead generation retention all those things it was all mixed into one script and you would make the call outbound call uh, and the outbound call there was no concept of you know call centers then it was primarily the sales guy calling out mm. and setting up a meeting and setting up trying to figure out when we can meet so it was so messy but the best part is people were more inviting at that point of time when you make a phone call people would say hey come on let's have a chat and discuss but the number of marketers today have grown significantly and people are saying hey wait i don't want to take your call and let me kind of space out let me wait i don't want to i don't have time now i'm busy with meetings so people are getting busier as we go along so they're saying okay let's wait i don't want uh, i let me uh introduced then they came, then they started introducing uh, the concept of gatekeepers so earlier i could go and talk to the cxo or ceo mm -hmm. company and is and it was easy pc right so they would just say okay let's let's have a chat let's uh and have a discussion let's see what you have in what you have to offer but the number of calls number of people increase and say okay now they have a gatekeeper the gatekeeper could be the receptionist the gatekeeper could be a personal secretary and then getting through that gatekeeper was becoming very difficult okay and that became the next stage of marketing right so that is when you say okay then digital marketing came in email marketing came up big time so you would start sending you get hold of the email or email address of the person mm -hmm. and it would go directly to his inbox and say okay now let me uh, understand where will i get uh, uh, can i get a discussion with him on the email can i get a response from him on the email even that became very crowded then they started introducing spam filters right so anything coming out from there let me that a spam filter is nothing but a gatekeeper yes so you have this concept so every time marketers keep finding out a method to reach you have a gatekeeper installed so that you know they can not they need not deviate from their core work of getting things done and leave all the uh, essence of uh, you know uh, marketing you know understanding the decision making taken during marketing left out to someone someone else down the order then this concept of you know all your website that you know when people go on the website you engage with them all this started that we call loosely called as the conversion rate optimization part seeds you know or your website gets automated when i come to this page it gets triggered when i go to that page uh, pro, you know uh, a poll kind of come pops up you know you can you answer this so all this came up in the last few years 
where people websites got busier and busier and you started uh, you know people wanted more engagement on the website so things became so messy and things like that and that is one aspect of outbound or uh, when companies try to reach out to consumers or to the decision makers within organizations the second thing is uh, for the organize i'm sorry i'm taking some more time no it's okay, okay. Uh, if other panelists may want to jump in they can uh, but what uh, the uh, the other side on the flip side uh, from the receiver side from the uh, organization perspective earlier there was one person who would take the call maybe the cxo as we call it then we then it became more and more complex saying okay my role as a cxo uh, i have a cfo now i have a cto i have a C chief marketing officer chief operations officer operating officer and so on and so forth so each became their own decision units decision making mm -hmm. units within the organization and it is not one person that we are uh, that is approving a deal it is just that it becomes like a multitude of people a team of people who are approving one deal within an organization i cannot approve unilaterally within an organization i need to take a consult with someone else so the, as a result what is happening is a b2b decision making is distributed across the organization there is not one person who is taking the call it is a team of people for instance let me give an example of uh, in my when in one of the organizations that i work for uh, a london based firm i was part of the marketing board as we call it so the marketing board had to take a decision on let's say whether to buy pardot or a hubspot kind of a, a which marketing tool automation tool to buy so it was not just a decision of the team members and the marketing board consisted of not just marketers the senior marketers but also people from the sales team people from the engineering team people from the finance team and uh, and uh, various other teams as well so all these people because any lead that comes in has to have you know relevance for whichever department so how is the lead getting distributed across the team members how is the lead getting processed over the time what is the conditions Uh, it is not just banting you know bant is basically budget authority need and timeline that is what was there earlier as a qualifier for lead but now, uh, there are several other aspects of you know lead qualification that companies need to do so when i look at it from what a typical company does and what how a process of decision making happens within a company it is not you know, one has to understand the other con other aspect very deeply one has to follow what is the seller doing the seller has to understand what is the buyer doing so that buyer seller interaction across the funnel and when i say the funnel funnel is basically a, a, in my concept funnel is a three dimensional is like a, a time space continuum of a decision leading to a certain goal hmm. a vector i would call it where you have uh, people talking about Uh, awareness at the top of the funnel mm -hmm. and, uh, some kind of a decision making as to narrow down decision of whom to whether to purchase in the middle of the funnel and then you have a f financial discussion at the bottom of the funnel correct so across the time space continuum and it happens over the period of time not everybody within the organization are at the same part of the funnel let us say i'm talking to infosys as a company some people are at the bottom of the funnel some people are at the middle of the funnel some people mm -hmm. are at the top of the funnel yeah same time unless until there is some kind of a uni unison of understanding of what's happening about the particular deal it is very difficult to close and the second thing is there are a lot of uh, uh, you know i'm going on and on so what i would do is i'm trying to kind of summarize the yeah thing of the funnel and my understanding of what b2b challenges are so i've taken about 5 uh, 7 minutes i think on this first fun uh, funnel question so i hope i've been able to make a impression about what my what how funnels have evolved over time i will 
uh, ask the next panelist to take on from here and answer their perspective. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Ram. Uh, I would like to request Reena to uh, point out your view. Yeah. So, uh, as per my understanding and my experience, when I started working into the digital segment, the industry was divided into two major segments, marketing and sales. Marketing used to generate the leads and sales used to communicate to them to understand whether the lead was a warm lead, a qualified lead or worthy of converting, whether they actually need what we are selling. But then this entire sales gamut has been taken over by AI now. Because uh, when you are generating the lead, at the same time, if you ask the lead what exactly the person wants, so then you definitely filter whether the person is actually looking out for the product or service that you are actually selling. For example, suppose we are generating a lead for an e-commerce and the, uh, it's a bulk inquiry for B2B, the person is looking out for white t-shirts. Now when the lead comes in, the lead would be like a common lead. Yes, I'm looking for fabric or I'm looking for uh, shirts. But when you ask them with the AI intelligence of a robot, you understand what kind of t-shirt the person wants, what quantity the person is looking for, yeah. what make, shape and size the person is looking for and whether we have the ability to fulfill that or not. Mm -hmm. So the entire sales process which was actually taken over by a human being, calling to them telephonically, taking the inputs manually over a telephone call, that has been taken over by robotic intelligence. So ideally to summarize, I would like to say that AI is basically developing a robot or a bot communication in a manner exactly the way human being is thinking, the robot thinks, and we map uh, the human uh, methodology of thinking with robotic algorithm, and we devise the questions which the person would be asking, and we uh, design the answers well in advance. So uh, when it comes to actual execution, sometimes we feel that uh, robots today are intelligent enough, but then sometimes they don't ask exactly the questions which should be asked. So in that case, generally we run the campaign for some time. We try to understand what questions the users are actually asking and take that input to configure the bots. So that is where our performance actually increases big time. And we are able to automate the bot with little manual intervention at this moment. Correct, correct. So that is how it has evolved. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I would like to request Mr. Karthik to explain his yeah, point. Ram also explained that uh, world versus new kind of thing, right? I don't want it right? because I also come from that okay. where I started calling right, to the US with email and phone calling. So I'll explain the current uh, probably the ecosystem, right? So what the typical funnel looks like, hey, you know, top of the funnel, middle of the funnel, bottom of the funnel. Like it's a proper funnel, like you attract. Yeah, create interest, desire, and action, whatever, right? The typical funnel then customer, you know, at, after a certain stage. Uh, but like this from traditional funnel, it has become flywheel, right? Customer as the base, service, uh, sales, marketing, you know, spread around these three areas and to whatever, you know, you want to make sure that you have the customers, right? So traditionally, that's where, you know, very account specific, uh, orchestration campaigns came into existence and a lot of them started focusing on very specific accounts uh, because I from, come from a B2B, I mean I think Rina has explained about uh, B2C, I come from a complete B2B background SaaS. Um, so yeah, that's one evolution, right? In terms of the current evolution, I, I see a lot of people talk about dark social, dark funnel, like there's so many things that there's no direct attribution to any of what we're doing or or any of what traditional companies are doing. The successful companies I see mostly, they're everywhere, right? When I say everywhere, there is no direct attribution. You can't say that, hey, I'm going to write a blog. Okay, somebody is talking about a particular keyword and they go read the blog and then, you know, they download a couple of white papers and then read a case study and become a customer. Like, they're, they're going to buy the product, right? That's not, that. probably that was earlier, but not anymore, right? I'll give you a simple example, right? Okay. Uh, so in a in a situation like this, right? So your audience is in, your audience is B2B and they are in LinkedIn, right? Uh, a good company creates good content on LinkedIn 
not only their company page but everybody in the company right? they all create good content right so that the company is quite visible on you know uh, any social media that their audience is there like let's say linkedin is for b2b right and also create content on multiple communities if i am selling to a you know marketing group or a sales group right i go create a community or i be part of some communities to kind of be present add value contribute right there are you know lots of marketing communities paid communities and lots of sales communities right so typically and there's much more right i mean just an example right then just growing an example right which means these days people don't people know everything right assuming that you know you can educate somebody to kind of get them into a buying decision is actually uh, a little older concept uh, right uh, which is what we did in blogs and creating landing pages and stuff right people are people know everything right somebody wants to kind of sell a chatbot to a marketer a marketer pretty much knows what a chatbot does you don't go up to you know explain hey okay a chatbot is a you know something something which will do something something right which means traditionally 95% they know what they want it's just a question of what is the best for me at this stage for my budget and what are my peers and reviewers you know community is saying about the product so that i can make the decision i i can you know make sure that my decision is the best decision so that i can get approval from the manager right so typically when i do marketing i look at all of these metrics right where my audiences are right i don't have like a proper defined funnel for a lot of things but i see there are in some places you will have a proper defined funnel if you go outbound you know you, you define your icp then you take a set of accounts from uh, you know sales navigator and get the email ids and put them on a sequence right the funnel is straight forward you, you get a reply then you follow up get a meeting the funnel is very straight forward meeting to demo demo to you know opportunity opportunity to, to whatever negotiation and then close one like right yes. but in a marketing typical inbound funnel right you have a straight inbound funnel it's a high intent the uh, it's a google ads high intent transactional keywords right you set up a straight messaging you have good budget mm-hmm. straight spend 20 30000 dollars or maybe 50000 dollars on on ads get x amount of leads that is also straight forward right yeah but again, there are there are non straight forward activities which i see happening a lot right i bought i bought wrong in a in a place but just like one community called peak i just read a review saying something posted saying they one of the best rois uh, i ever made is wrong right uh, even though i go wrong it was amazing to hear from somebody he was a customer I'd say that the best roi that he has is from wrong right which kind of made me to go pay people that hey let's buy wrong and implement right and uh, that kind of triggered the whole uh, buying decision for gong which means there is no attribution for this right so traditionally a um, lot of influencing in especially in saas is also happening using brand and you know whatever we are doing you know externally like this right dark social mm-hmm. right you you should be present wherever your audience are and then make sure that you create you know content and visibility for them to decide faster and decide they decide on the best uh, time to buy the product and not to miss it right that's it so that is the transition uh, but how do they call it right now there is no proper structure right now but i think it will be evolved somebody will define somebody will give a name right but yeah. for me that the attribution is like this like this like this it's like not the standard thing right like like how our uh, stock market is right now like one day tough like so the attribution yeah. is like okay it's like up and down here there there one day linkedin content i saw then a community one message i saw right then i other day i saw an article we are uh, fundraise article right mm-hmm. other day one colleague had talked about uh, the product right then i went to g2 review and like read about the product in detail i saw a couple of videos their employee engagement videos on linkedin and then by the time i like the product and the company so much right i want to work with them so typically like i said you know attribution is if you have all of these in mind and you work things properly uh, you kind of kind of changes come and then i think adoption will also come a lot of people as well that's my thought process correct uh, since like uh, you know we are talking about the evolution of the marketing funnel and also ram told us about all how it was there in back like back in before 20 years and then now how it is how it is evolving so i have a question related to that 
what are the traditional barriers to B2B marketing funnel experience right now? I mean, what are those traditional barriers that we are facing? And if you can also take us through some case study or something. So, so uh, Rina, uh, yeah, okay. Sorry. Ram, if you want to take this question. Yeah. No, that's okay. So when you say, uh, I thought you meant it for me, so directed it at me. But anyway, I'll take this on. Yeah. So um, first and foremost, the biggest barrier in B2B is it is not one person you're talking to. It is a group of people, like I mentioned, whom yeah. we are talking to for any, whether it's a financial deal, whether it's a tool, whether it's a marketing or software to be sold or if it's an infrastructure that has to be sold. So you're talking to multiple people within an organization because within the organization, they they all come under what we call as influencers. Okay. So they make, they take a decision that will influence or they take, they create an influence that will make them take a decision, right? Okay. So okay. that's the thing that we need to be aware of when we do B2B. So because, uh, let us say, well, let me give an example. So, I want to sell uh, uh, a software. Like I want to sell. I used to work for Microsoft earlier, so I may I can say I, if you go to an organization to sell to an enterprise uh, uh, like Infosys to sell uh, enterprise uh, merchant of uh, now, who are the people whom you will be talking to? It is a very simple thing, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, you would say, I would just go to the CTO, Chief Technology Officer or a C, uh, engineer, Chief of Engineering or something like that, those days, uh, usually the CTO, you would go tell him, okay, this is what you need to buy. And that guy would kind of buy the product and say, okay, that guy would say, he would take it on to, like the proposal, hand it over, the, uh, over to the CFO and say, okay, let me buy, let me... Uh, make the decision and it will be a million dollar deal signed and there'll be a big party and everyone wins now today uh, 20 years later it no longer works like that okay because there is a lot of uh, competition people will say okay if i have to buy a, a you know microsoft window windows server or i want to switch from linux to windows or something like that yeah there's not one person taking the call and everybody obeys. There is a lot of, uh, in today's organization, there is something called as everybody is measured based on their KPIs or metrics, right? So if I say, okay, my goal is to deliver this product from here to here. If Windows does not offer, make me productive, I can raise an objection and say, man, I am unable to, uh, I can't work with Windows. So therefore, let me be, let me run on Linux, let my operations run on Linux. So there is an objection already raised within the organization. So now it is back to the Windows team, sales team or the account management team to say, okay, how will this work? So that much that work comes up onto the Windows organization say, okay, now I will help you move from Linux, I'll set, set up a separate team to help you move from Linux to Windows or whatever. Now that is an additional cost of acquisition that the, now we need to consider. Same thing, okay, like every team has to be, you need to, uh, this is called as backroom operations, right? Uh, how okay. people manage dissent within the organization? How do you quell the dissent and move from one department to another and say, okay, how is this better than uh, Linux when you move to Windows? and how your operations and how your KPIs will not get affected when you move. In fact, it will improve. So now you need to work with the organization. You'll work with the head of the departments of various teams and say, okay, how this will not work. So you are already increasing the cost of engagement, cost of acquisition, because you got to engage with multiple team members. And then yeah. this itself becomes too big a deal to deal with. A small organization finds it very hard to convince a large organization to sell, uh, to buy into their product. So what do small organizations do? So that becomes the key uh, to how to sell to a large organization, to an enterprise organization, 
Uh, so typically what you do is you piggyback on yeah. some other tool or some other uh, integration option. Let's say somebody's already using SAP or somebody's already using Salesforce. You say, okay, I will create a small API which sells on their marketplace and you can integrate it as an additional feature. So that is the deal that how many companies now started operating for a period of time. So I that's part of the answer. It's not the complete answer. So I think I will leave it to the next panelist to kind of take it forward from there and manage the traditional lead yeah. to the future. Correct. Yeah, uh, Rina, if you want to uh, answer this. Yeah, uh, I would like to answer this uh, from a marketing perspective. So basically, uh, I would like to bring up a different uh, issue, a different uh, concern in the B2B funnel when it comes to marketing. So suppose okay. when we are running a campaign, which is like a pan-India campaign, so there would be certain geographies which could convert well. So when you are running the campaign for the first time, you understand that you got leads from Kolkata, you got leads from Delhi, and you got leads from Bangalore. But other regions did not convert well, but despite of that, you ended up spending on the marketing campaign. Now, yeah. with intelligence coming into picture, second time when you run the campaign, the AI robots of the automation as well as the chat should be intelligent enough to understand that these are the three geographies which are working for me. And next time when I'm spending on marketing, let me target only these three regions. So Correct. over a period of time, the because of the past data, which we generally, uh, the world is moving towards big data and analytics. So anything yeah. which is a past purchase, a past sale, uh, that data is analyzed, statistically uh, stored, and uh, some intelligence is driven out of it. And mm -hmm. automatically robots configure the new marketing communication based on that previous intelligence. So this brings the cost of marketing down. And yeah. definitely when you end up targeting the right customer who has the need for your product or someone who converted very easily last time. So that digital strategy basically is missing in the current uh, marketing funnel, which once optimized, definitely the ROAS will increase big time. And also this thing not only helps in uh, converting the user once, but later on it uh, helps communicating with the same company again and again with any of the upcoming requirements. Because B2B generally the uh, advantage is the same people end up buying products from you n number of times in a year. Because somebody who's yeah. buying raw material would end up buying or subscribing to the product maybe 12 times in a year or more than that. So this intelligence definitely helps scaling big time so i would <laughs> highlight that digital strategy is something strategical thinking is important yeah so we can say that retention is moreover increasing with the intelligence yes retention at the same time the cost of acquisition comes down yes. because once you know the converting geography is you end mm -hmm. up uh, spending your money more frugally at the right locations that convert well for you yeah, correct. Uh, Karthik, if you want to add anything to what Reena and Ram said. Okay, you come back to the question. You said in, uh, challenges in B2B. Yeah. So, uh, uh, what are the traditional barriers to B2B marketing funnel experience? Traditional, can you elaborate traditional barriers? What traditional, you uh, traditional barriers in the sense, what are the main challenges in the B2B final experience what we, we are facing in as same a B2B marketing? The same problem, the leakage, final leakages, it, it is the, it is the single biggest problem as far as I know, right? It is traditional, it is still there, it will be there, right? The biggest problem that you have is you put so much of top of the funnel and then comes out like like you know how it is right from here it will come down to here and then like drop here right so typically that problem is still very very heavy uh, most of the early stage companies that i focus I, I consult on right they want to start and creating you know they want to start with uh, a, i want leads i want leads i want leads right mm. they'll focus on leads and stuff right but at the same time a lot of them you know, fail to focus on quality uh, versus quantity. A lot of them focus on quantity 
they are not icp focused okay i want leads i want mqls right that's the biggest challenge that i see mql driven so now i in a couple of companies that i work with we moved away from mql driven to pipeline driven right so marketing is responsible for pipelines like i'm going to qualify until a certain stage and give it to sales so sales can actually take those leads and give them because they they can't tell me that it's no more an opportunity because you have the recordings you have the call recordings and gong you have a handover process properly defined you have a qualification criteria like from say temp or a band criteria right and then you have a sales uh, a qualification criteria defined properly on sales force like sql sql 10 sql 20 30 40 50 100 right so which means the handover you know in some cases i see that when you do that it becomes much more marketing will become much more uh, um matured and also uh, not been question i've seen like you know, not a lot of questions versus you know very focus on a lot of mqls because end of the day same same problem marketing sales fight uh funnel leakages um then quality versus quantity right uh reporting only on you know traffic and uh, you know leads and stuff like that right they are they are there like still there so the first thing that i generally tell people is to fix those things right, right? then uh, then comes uh, then comes the automation like how do you fix all of this is by uh, by very simple automation like for lead quality you, you create a enrichment uh, integration with clearbit or something else right which will qualify those leads for you then you automatically say that this x will x you know 100 million revenue will go to sales a or 200 million revenue company will vp of marketing will go to sales b and stuff like that right i think it's important to also and then of course after this 90% of the companies that i work with you all have the same problem right the, the lead follow up time is 2 days 3 days 4 days sometimes one week right um so it is you have to make sure that you have to reach a you know lead in 30 30 minutes now the era of you know following up with leads is gone like generally you book them uh, either on a conversational bot wasnas they are in a in the website uh, if they are interested to talk to you right you should find a way to make sure that create a playbook and then book a meeting directly or show them the calendar so that they can talk to you right or maybe you know have a video call enabled feature and then they want to call you put a put a guy and then talk to them right so lot of people i would say lack common sense uh, including me marketers right uh, so having a proper common sense also will help like there's nothing as i said you no know, technology has come a long way b2c has evolved b2b has not evolved b2b marketing has become very boring uh, b2c has like tremendously evolved like zepto zomato the kind of content they create you no know, it's quite amazing but b2b is no 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 we'll only write very formal email we'll only write very formal linkedin post he'll say that hey okay here is a blog post please go read the blog post right uh, for me that there's no logic to it okay no who's really you have two likes in a blog post uh, on linkedin why are you still posting it the, the question is that that right like having that mindset change is very important i think that is a biggest challenge but apart from mindset change these are the four five problems i said quality problem mql problem Uh, the the lead funnel optimization like you know drop off leakage problem like lead not followed up in in, in 30 30 minutes or less than that problem uh, not measuring the overall funnel also marketers 99% if i ask them one simple question how many leads you have generated become closed one none of them give even not even a single guy gave me a correct answer so far i probably work with a lot of marketers right so that's the problem that as a marketer you know there's no visibility and you know people are too focused on their own thoughts i think these are like the pro- basic problems that i see from uh, marketing angle especially from a b2b saas uh, even saas i mean saas is actually very matured uh, compared to other industries but yeah i think other industries are very far behind but i see a lot of these problems in saas as well <coughs> okay uh, thank you kartik uh, so uh I can see there is one question from Sebal Guha in the chat. The question is what are the best practices to create disruption at different stages of funnel through AI? Uh, any of the panel member can take up this question? Yeah, I would like to address this question. Uh, Sebal, 
So basically, uh, the question that you asked, I'll give you a real life example of a B2C case study rather than the same can be mapped to B2B. So uh, there was at one point mm -hmm. of time, I was running campaign generating needs for a company. And then there was a different sales uh, department who was working there. So when the leads uh, ended up coming, the sales team said, uh, because the leads are much, they are like 400 leads that you generate in a day. We are not able to cater it in 24 hours time. And maybe X number of other reasons, sometimes people don't pick the call. Uh, it's not the right time, they're not free. So with customized content, actually increase the revenue by 40%. And at the same time, the sales team was giving us feedback that the leads are not converting. We are not liking the type of leads that we are generating. So generally, when you have this AI bots in place, mm -hmm. uh, it's like uh, uh, with a very smart uh, customized uh, content or customized communication. And uh, that can be developed uh, and mapped with AI robots so that they create customized content on the fly. Because every customer is very unique. You cannot even have a set of 10 questions that fit all. Every person has very unique customized requirement and the intelligence is what helps you devise that content. The way we have emailers which address you with your name so mm -hmm. that even if a human being sits and sends, there will be a lot of laborious tasks. But yes, when it's taken up by a robot, uh, it customizes every email with your name that's sent out. So that type of intelligence uh, where the customer feels very comfortable because you're addressing him with the name, trying to understand what he exactly wants. And then so definitely helps you devise a very uh, killer strategy in the marketing funnel. Hope that addresses your question, Sabil. Yes, uh, Sebel has answered in the chat box. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Rina. Uh, so, uh, as we are talking previously about the leads, so my I have curious. I'm curious about another question. Uh, we uh, we I want to know what is a conversation qualified leads, and how can we achieve it for a B two B brands. So basically, there is a difference between. Uh, uh, sorry, I'm continuing. Yeah, now you can take it out. No, no, it's okay. Good. Okay. So uh, there is something that we call marketing qualified lead, and there is mm -hmm. conversational qualified lead. Yeah. So marketing qualified lead is any lead which is warm, which has a requirement. We call it marketing qualified lead. Now, conversation qualified lead is a chatbot has communicated with the customer okay. to fetch his exact requirement. So yeah. it could be a granular level of requirement. Suppose somebody wants to buy a software, but then he wants to slice a software or wants to buy a slice of a CRM software or only a finance module or only a, a customer front end HR module. So once you understand that uh, granular information, uh, capture that from the customer, it's called chatbot qualified or conversational qualified lead. Okay. And uh, yes, now, Ram, you would love to add to it? Oh, okay. No, I mean, uh, I was trying to give a perspective rather yes. than an answer. Uh, my perspective is um, earlier, uh, I'll give you a, uh, you know, uh, I think Karthik alluded to it before. We used to have what is called as a sales qualified lead, right? So we, before marketing even came up, so it was always called a lead and then you sales kind of qualifies it because there was nothing called as a marketing qualification earlier. So there was a sales qualification. That means that sales guy goes out and talks to the customer, ban banting happens. Banting is basically BANT, budget authority need and timeline. Those questions are asked and the sales can, guy kind of Ask, finalizes whether it's a lead or not. Then the thing changes, changed to uh, instead of why does this very highly paid sales guy does the qualification. So it, the thing, the handoff went on to uh, what is called as an inside salesperson. So basically a telephone uh, guy would call up the customer and say, do you have budget authority need a timeline? So that became a sales qualified or a pre-sales or an inside sales qualified lead. And that handed handoff happened to the salesperson. 
and uh, that also became too difficult because you don't do cold calling uh, all the time. It's very expensive to do cold mm-hmm. calling. So marketing would, you know, ask some, you know, send out an emailer, they would respond and then the sales would pick up or they would uh, do something. So the marketing uh, would, uh, you know, ask a question whether they are interested in the product uh, or, uh, or the service. So if they said, yes, I'm interested, then the marketing would say, uh, marketing has qualified this lead and then hand it over to the uh, salesperson to close it. Hmm. But as uh, you know, Karthik alluded that marketing does not do a great job of qualification because you know the time taken to you know respond back by the sales guy would take phenomenal amount of time because see it is marketing and sales especially closing of the deal is all about timing if i do not get ans- uh, get an answer at the right time by the by by which by i mean if i ask a question and if i close after if i respond back after 15 days the sales uh, the the buyer would have walked out to the competition or something like that. So I would would have lost the lead. So the idea here is how do I kind of reduce this effort of the, you know, the response time, Mm. uh, the, the, uh, you know, response back time. So basically chatbots came into play from that perspective. So how do I enable some kind of a AI built AI driven chatbot to ensure that the handoff see there are there is a lot of thing called as a handoff alignment and a handoff between sales and marketing the marketing generates uh, the lead and hands it over to the salesperson the sales guy said man this is not relevant to me why are you giving me this and making my wasting my time because this is the thing that you always fight with the sales guys i've given you 100 leads you are not even figured out if these 100 leads are good so mm-hmm. inside sales will call 50 and say man this is all useless it's all junk leads. They're useless and I just can't close it. So that's when AI comes into play. Okay. Conversation do, will the AI do, whatever the marketing, uh, let's say the uh, person comes onto the website, he will answer a question. Then mm-hmm. a chatbot will say, okay, he will ask all this bad questions or they will ask um, you know, timing, uh, technology based questions. They'll ask the relevance, whether you know, the, it'll have a conversation just like a human would do. Ask all the inf- information that as marketing or the sales guy would have asked. And that process, all that kind of gets processed and say, okay, this has got, this is what the chatbot has qualified and you put a score attached to that. And there will be always this gap, right? The sales guy will still say, uh, this is incomplete and I still don't. So that learning comes back to the say chatbot team. They ask those further questions. Yeah. So ultimately what will happen is you will have a fairly engaged, a lot of, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the bot becomes fairly engaging and fairly informative and fairly mm-hmm. conversational enough to qualify, which a sales guy can take it over from there and qualify the lead. I think that's where the thing comes in about conversation. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Ram. Uh, now I would like to request Karthik to point out. Yeah, I'll explain. I'll just give you one simple background of where where the SQL came into picture. Right? So you guys know Drift created this term called conversational marketing, right? Yeah. <coughs> so Drift also created a coin that's term called conversational. Uh, what is that? The conversational, like, what is that? The like, conversational qualified lead. It's called CQL. Yeah. Right? So, what you call CQL is nothing, just straightforward. Like anybody who comes to the chat, uh, you know, either the bot qualifies them or a live chat person or you know anybody who's on the other side qualifies those lead, it becomes a CQL. That's it. Nothing like a, like you know, simple mechanism, right? The, anybody who shows interest, who, you know, who the bot captured, you create a playbook and bot is capturing information and then qualifying them, then they are a sequel, that's it. So no, uh, uh, yeah, that's the simple answer to it. Yeah. So just to add to that, what SQL, uh, that Drift is saying, now message word is saying the same thing as well, right? 
So how they are? Yeah, like, uh, whoever says whatever, like, but at the end of the day, conversational marketing, they've written a book like long back, right? You can't nobody yeah. can take that back. So the the whole idea of conversational marketing I, was coined by uh, Drift, and they kind of did an amazing job with that. Thank you, Karthik. Uh, over to you, Apna. Yeah. So uh, next question from my side will be: What is the conversational gap in incoming lead funnel, and how do we close it? Uh, Karthik, over to you. What I mean by conversational gap in incoming? Can you dis- dis- describe that? What is conversational gap in? So. So in incoming lead funnel, we always have a gap. What is like we can say there is a communication gap between the uh, buyers and the cust- customer or the consumer. So if there is the gap, if there is a conversation gap between them. What will be the effect? So your uh, end of the day revenue effect, right? So the biggest. Uh, the greatest marketers uh, marketing you know world is run by marketers right the greatest yes. marketers always write the greatest copy right the greatest cor- copy will always create the greatest emotion right the greatest emotion will always create the greatest market for the product creating the greatest market for the product will end of the day become the greatest company in the world right and end of the day become the greatest brand right so yeah. it's a simple effect right where if you look back everything where it all started is the way that you write where the way you write the copy if if you have if you think that you have a gap in terms of what the customer wants and what you're selling uh, right the one thing that you go back and look at is there is everything right from scratch write your narrative from scratch write the copy from scratch right either way you see there's a better way to add to attribution right where Where, which, where they're coming? Where is that gap, right? So you can also look at okay. Let's say I'm, one channel is giving me good conversion, other channel there's a lot of confusion, right? Uh, so then it means that that channel, that particular channel, your copy is bad, right? The website is you know people who's coming to the website and not able to understand like you now they're miscommunicating. There's a lot of communication gap, right? They think that you your product is uh, you you want. I mean they. This if there's a miscommunication, right? Again, it's attributed to copy only. So, whatever uh, your ICP uh, definition has to be very clear, right? And once you define your ICP very clearly, then you have to communicate what you want, what you're offering to them, also very clearly in all of those channels. Of mm-hmm. course, that's why you have the narrative. That's why you have to create a proper story and narrative, and. Okay. Use the narrative across, right? Like you can't like say one thing in one com- one place and the other one like something else in some other place, right? Which means as simple as let's say you're offering a marketing automation solution, like your example itself, right? You can clearly say that hey, we help small and medium businesses, you know, automate your entire thing. Like then you can also say that hey, we help you automate your so so we help you automate your hubspot or whatever right and like you have to explain it very very clearly and very simple you know very simple way right so and that communication has to happen across all of all of the channels right and when that happens i don't think there will be will be a confusion at all right there won't be any confusion in terms of the marketing efforts uh, they're putting in um but otherwise if your website is not clear if your website messaging 99% again same like you people want to talk about features a lot um, you know people want to take you know people don't want to talk you know people kind of think they communicating in a different way but again having a good narrative uh, and defining your icp you know very early will help you uh, but again as a marketer again opinions doesn't matter like only few times like fine fine i mean you having a good narrative is is helping but again you have to consistently test your messaging also like you have to one day you have to change your copy you have to do a lot of experiments you have to always do every testing right? and figure out which is the better copy what is converting what is not converting and attribute also where that conversion gap is there and kind of do the attribution and then figure out right so the yeah. the, the the problem here is that if that is the case you have a problem with the copy there's nothing else just go change the copy so that's a simple solution okay what do you need 
Yeah, I would like to uh, present it in a simpler manner. Mm -hmm. Basically, suppose we want to sell a product and the company has a sales guy. Uh, so basically, the more informed the salesperson is, he would be able to sell the product more proficiently. Suppose yes. your sales guy is more equipped enough, has a better understanding of your product, uh, the USPs of the product, what your product does, uh, what problem it's going to uh, help users solve it. So, uh, suppose you have two sales guys. One sales guy is a pro at the product inside and other is not. So, definitely the person who is more informed will bring more sales. So, same thing is with uh, the robots. So, uh, mm -hmm. at the moment when we are devising a robotic communication, we are keeping it very basic. We are just trying uh, to put four or five questions in the mind of robot to address and communicate with the customer. But the more informed your robot is, uh, it, he'll be able to communicate better with the customer and convert the customer better. So, that is the gap. So, basically, when we are customizing the robot, it has to be more intelligently done so that mm -hmm. this gap which we are facing in the recent times that can be bridged and uh, uh, in case if you want to make it even more intelligent definitely big data insights can be mapped so that mm -hmm. uh, the robot can work like a human brain and take very automatic uh, decisions and right decisions in that case thank you Reena uh, over to Ram Ram please explain so my take would be uh, about uh, the conversation. See, I have already explained this in the sense that a lot of uh, handoffs align and alignment challenges happen in a B2B uh, setting, right? It is not uh, it is not linear. It means I give the lead, somebody takes the lead and yeah. takes it over, right? It is not that simple. So in B2B, there is we are talking to an organization with multiple decision minds. So how do you align all their outlook about your product? How do you give, how do you feed the message to them? How do you feed in information to the, all of them, bring them up to speed about the product so that everybody is able to kind of understand what the seller is trying to do? And depending on where he is on the funnel, like within the, like I mentioned before, right? Not everybody else is at the same point of the funnel with the organization. Each person within the organization decision team is at different levels. So how do you bring them up and say, okay, descent management. So you kind of feed like some, uh, I don't know who was mentioning, there is a concept called as drip marketing and things like that, right? So, so you bring in the concept of feeding uh, people who are interested about, about a particular topic send, uh, you know, send them blogs, send them information, send them various content that will make them understand your perspective better and make it more engaging. And that's what the bots are supposed to do, right? So they understand who is, who is at what stage of the funnel, respond based on their outlook, based on their current stage. And uh, that's, that's all there is to be. Okay. Thank you, Ram. Uh, now, I have a, a question where uh, in case of conversational gaps, we can see that there are two type of uh, marketing uh, automation, what is traditional and what is AI. So, my question is to the panel member, what is the difference between traditional marketing automation and AI marketing automation? and uh, how it can help the conversation gap. Over to uh, Ram. Okay, uh, like, uh, see, uh, mm -hmm. AI-driven AI response management versus a uh, you know, yeah. traditional response management, uh, it is actually, there is not much of a difference uh, from a fundamental perspective, right? Because mm -hmm. you're ultimately talking to the uh, uh, reader who is a human or who the consumer of the information who is a human. So let us say you tune the AI engine to rap randomly send messages or rapidly send more messages. Yeah. So it becomes that much, I mean, I would get uh, as a reader, I would be 
it, I would feel either it's too creepy okay. uh, uh, to uh, get that kind of information. Mm -hmm. Number two, I get too much of frequency of information, which is also too bad because I don't like that level of uh, too frequent a communication. I would write, I would like it more, you know, discreet or more spaced out information between two engagements because I come from a certain mindset. So the yeah. I, the idea here is there are two things. One is how can the resp see the the only thing the AI thing helps best is okay. if I ask a question. Uh, if I have a question as a, mm -hmm. a person, how quickly can I turn around okay. and provide that response, the okay. relevant response, mm -hmm. and give the right response that is required for the decision to be taken, so that I do not waste time over researching and over doing things and extracting the right information or handing over to the uh, the moment I sense that this person is asking more relevant question or uh, which is more sales uh, understanding the intent behavior uh, behavioral intent of the question of the engagement so for instance I have built my, uh, AI bots which kind of predicts a trained, not built rather, trained yeah. intent data based on intent data. Looking at the keywords that the user uses, we can pick up and say, okay, this guy is mostly a fraud or this okay. guy is mostly a, a, a you know, in a real, uh, a, you know, genuine buyer who is asking question is more information based questioning. So he may be a competitor or he may be someone else. So looking at topics, that, the questions that this guy says, we, uh, we classify the responder into different buckets. And depending on that, we kind of allow the bots to take over and say, okay, this guy is a genuine buyer. This guy is more like an information seeker. This guy is more like a fraud. This guy is more like a competitor and so on and so forth. So we kind of, it's easier to bucket okay. these people and then act upon the uh, the right response hope that yeah. which is not possible in uh, in a traditional marketing setup. thank you ram uh, what do you karthi uh, no i think uh, you answered the question uh, so you have another question you can move on I'll let me answer uh, okay rina you would like to answer okay. Yes, yes. So basically, it's a very interesting question. And in marketing, we have different campaigns uh, uh, that we can classify as traditional marketing and AI driven marketing. So traditional marketing is the first campaigns that we set up on digital marketing, where we uh, filter the audience based on the demography, the location, uh, the age group, and a certain uh, in interest based on user's persona. Maybe the person, uh, if I'm selling a sports product, I would see that the person has interest in sports or uh, sports goodies, or maybe is an athlete or uh, is uh, accessing uh, sports uh, news channels online. So that is the traditional kind of marketing. One more layer of marketing that has evolved in recent years is AI driven, which generally we call remarketing campaigns, which are based on that particular logic. So suppose somebody is shopping on e-commerce and has put a product in add to cart and just disappeared. Or there are audience who has just initiate checked out and mm -hmm. they have disappeared. Now with this remarketing, we mm -hmm. uh, generally run campaigns and show the same products to the same users which they have engaged with in last 15 or 30 days. So. You might have also experienced that you might have put some uh, products in uh, to cart in some of the website and they follow you on internet wherever you go till you end up purchasing them. So that's one kind of AI which has been like uh, added and it really uh, works well because that is something which is a filtered product according to your customized choice. You have only put it in the add to cart basket and it's just following you to complete your transaction. So that kind of marketing actually uh, brings in more intelligence and definitely increases the conversion and brings the cost of acquisition down. So same thing can be done with bots. Mm -hmm. So this is just a simple, uh, marketing example which I gave you. So there's very fine line. They are all marketing campaigns. But okay. yes, AI is coming with little extra uh, intelligence over the traditional marketing. 
So that's uh, I'll give you a simple example. Like uh, if you're done, Dina. Yes, please. So so there's a company I was working full time, right? So basically, we want to um, we're booking about ten meetings from uh, Drift, right? Uh, there's good traffic, hundred thousand plus monthly traffic, or at fifty thousand monthly traffic, right? The we want to increase the uh, conversion and you know make sure that a lot of people book demos, right? So you when you look at a uh, lot of it's the same logic as copy right so how can you increase conversion and you can definitely increase conversion in you know you know bot uh, in a conventional bot if you look at it you know uh, uh, let's say again a logical way right so then for first it has to be triggered right and then the trigger has to create a curiosity right it it depends on a, again um, in a conventional i think brina is a better person to kind of even say that right in a conventional way you don't have to sell you don't you have to just create a conversation right people don't understand that they will try to sell uh, in email in phone calls in whatsapp in a chatbot right yeah. you can't sell it is a it is called as conversational right so if you create a conversational playbook you have a much better chance of conversion right that is one point the other and then you know when we did that no then we looked at data hey, how many times the bot has been triggered Right? How many people clicked on, you know, sales, or how many people clicked on marketing, all of that. Now, then we optimize for that. Then that ten went to fifty or sixty. That's one way of looking at things, right? And in a B two B model, right, every lead is important to reduce CAC, to reduce CPL, right? Let's say you you run campaigns, you drive traffic to the landing page, right? Mm-hmm. You have a seven eight fields uh, in the form. Uh, generally, people don't tend to you know fill all of those fields and stuff, right? Which means they will have a lot of drop-offs at each stage of the funnel. Also, even for a traditional, uh, you know, Google Ads or whatever, you know, campaigns or webinars or whatever you are doing, right? Which means uh, a conversational trigger can actually increase the conversion if you kind of think logically. Again, right? How do I make sure that? And some of the bots, I think I work with Incent, right? There, there it can even do an IP result and tell you that hey. This person from X company has come in now, so go talk to him now, and then it will tell you push that information in Slack, so that you can actually ping him, re- respond back, and say that hey, Karthik, welcome to Incent, and just talk to them and then convert, right? And the best way to convert a lead is is at the moment, right? Not like yeah. go back and follow up using a call or a, or a LinkedIn follow up or or email, right? Somebody who's on the website. It's always good to kind of catch hold of them and then talk to them and figure out. Right? They'll either say yes or no, which means the whole idea of you have a lot of you know problems will be solved that way, right? So either with the bot or with live chat, like both ways, right? So you, you can't do you can't do one and then it is a combination, right? So you if you know how to use the bot and if you know how to use it properly, uh, there are other like lot of lot of personalized ways also triggers and everything you can do. uh and there of course you know we all know the cookie right so anybody who is not a lead uh, you don't know them but anybody who is a lead you can easily find out as soon as they come in on the website like you can easily trigger a message saying hey mega welcome back something like that right so yeah. it's much more personalized right that lead uh, can be uh, triggered like you also know that that lead has engaged and probably had a score of 50 plus or 60 plus right which means that person You can say that hey, last time you read about ebook, right? Here is a case study for you, similar. Like, just take this and like you know, let me know if you need any help, right? So those kind of personalized uh, level of thought process will help you improve the overall conversion. And I, I think there are other use cases. I'll please stop it. Stop it. Thank you, Kanti. Yeah. I would like to add one thing here. So in the earlier days when digital marketing came into inception. we always used to compare it with offline marketing so suppose somebody is going in a store to buy something the seller has an ability to convince he has a convincing power to sell the product and service but when you talk about digital the buyers are not in front of you so talking to somebody who is not in front of you and making them convert is even more challenging so with this ai conversational bots and ai conversational activities that have come into a place they are removing the drawbacks of digital marketing and mm-hmm. giving a more human interaction online to the customers mm-hmm. so that they convert better okay understood 
So uh, as we are having a time constant now, I would like to thank you all of our esteemed panel members for this insightful discussion. But uh, I would like to request Ankit also to share his idea about what he is thinking about disrupting the funnel and scale revenue teams with the marketing automation. Hey, uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ram, uh, Rina, and Karthik. A lot of uh, detail and and journey through uh, journey through last twenty years. Yes. Uh, so even I have been into this very same journey. So uh, I was working with Webpro back in uh, 20, uh, 2011. and I I was involved into migration of uh, old Unica to Marketo. And uh, that is where I came to understand about this marketing uh, automation industry. And uh, this has been there for last 25 years, uh, even more than that, actually. So I have seen whole of the evolution curve since then and uh, had read about how, how the evolution has happened. And since beginning on uh, our platform, when we started conceptualizing how do we scale it across the dip disruption along the digital channels, so we figured out that each each three years and 2.5 years, uh, one more uh, one more channel of communication emerges across the marketing and and marketing uh, need to uh, need to engage their audiences across those channels. So when we talk about channels, so today also we could see uh, a lot of emergence of channel from direct mail to email to email to. SMS, now RCS is there, and again, uh, along with RCS, we have WhatsApp, Line, WeChat, so many messengers and chatbots across the market, and according to the business, their customers are hanging across all these platforms doing communication, and then uh, a major task that evolves with the uh, with the marketers is to automate these with uh, uh, with really uh, good AI, and AI having, having good uh, detail about the business and the uh, and and the focus on how to engage the customers to drive the qualification of the incoming volume of visitors or the lead. So, having looked into all these, uh, we could see uh, a lot of a lot of presence now coming into the marketing team. And over the time, what we have seen when the company is trying to evolve across uh, multiple channels and multiple uh, sources of business. It is more about evolution across digital channel. And all in all, uh, what we could see is uh, all work now is coming under whole of marketing operations where we could see uh, whole operations have become uh, a core part of, of company's strategy and brand's success. So even with us and with our customers, we keep on evolving with all these tools, small, small uh, tools we have on our platform which is uh, which is getting across used by our uh, our marketing operation team and the customers mm -hmm. so very much dependent on on what the brand's customer looking forward for where they are hanging around that is where whole of the digital and uh, and whole of the marketing strategy we enable uh, businesses to implement to experiment do A/B testing and then uh, and then start uh, executing quarter on quarter uh, driving improvement for the business so these are the things with this concept we introduce all of the platform and right now our platform having uh, having all these features what we discussed uh, i'm not at all selling our platform or or trying to uh, trying to uh, trying to evolve out here it's more of uh, uh, where we are getting so so tomorrow is more about uh, the platform's marketing automation is is going to be on VR, a marketing automation in, 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 in Web3 ecosystem, marketing automation in Metaverse. So all are also evolving and uh, and emerging into the market at, at very same pace uh, what we have seen uh, evolve, evolution of all these marketing channels into the market according to the audiences in the customer segments. So we we are definitely at, at a really big uh, turnaround where we could see uh, evolution of these channels and engaging and making the brand uh, coming closer to the customers it still remains our uh, our very fundamental goal where we are enabling our brands to come closer to their customers yeah thank you Ankit. Uh, now uh, i would like to thank our sponsors also Redboard and niche market so 
when we come to a short introduction about the plate bar, it's a digital transformation customer experience and data driven marketing company. And the link is given in the chat box. Coming to the niche marketers, it's a community of credible and expert marketers in India. And their link is also given in the chat box. Okay. So, uh, thank you. I've learned a lot from you. Now, you are not I would like to add here that we are organizing a webinar on a weekly basis. Hello. Every Thursday, Friday. Am I audible now? Yes. Okay. So, uh, thank you so much panel members for this super engaging session. I'm sure everyone must have learned a lot. And as you all know, know that we are organizing these webinar on weekly basis every Thursday 5 p.m. and next uh, week that we have planned next webinar that is on 7th of July that is stages of the customer journey in unified digital marketing so for that registration is open and we are providing the registration link in the uh, chat you can just go and register we have also made a WhatsApp group where we do give update about the webinar topic so if you are interested you can join the group as well we will put this webinar on our YouTube channel that is Aretik. Do like, share and subscribe to our channel for the recorded version of the webinar. Thank you everyone. Thanks for the opportunity guys. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone once again. Thanks. Thank you so much everyone. Bye. 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 Thank you guys. Have a nice day. Amit and Dharmesh, you can leave the call. Vasanthi, you can leave the call. Thank you. Mukaranji. Ajay.